Of all the engine configurations, five cylinders have to be some of the most unique. The rare odd cylinder count and unique firing order give them an unmistakable sound tied to an intriguing internal design. However, as always, not all of them were created equal. So today, we're going to be ranking each five cylinder production engine to find out which one comes out on top. Let's get started. Honda has always been good at building inline four cylinder engines, so they took that and tried their luck at an inline five. The G20A and larger G25A were the only duo of five cylinders that Honda ever made with a full aluminum construction and single overhead camshaft. They aren't the most powerful, but are said to be very smooth and have little reliability concern. The factory intake and header systems are highly restrictive, limiting power output, but for the cars that used the G-Series, it did exactly what it needed to. These factors, compared with a nice sound, will have this duo starting us off in the A-Tier. Next is the Vortec 5-cylinder from GM. Ranging from 3.5 to 3.7 liters and found in smaller pickup trucks, these engines were mechanically advanced, with variable valve timing and great fuel economy. The performance figures are certainly on the weak side for an engine of this size, but there isn't really anything else to fault the Vortec inline 5 for. It would be fitting to place the Vortec into the B tier. Land Rover has a wide range of opinions when it comes to engine quality, but the TD5 is one that they surely got right. This inline 5 turbo diesel is nearly indestructible. Found in off-road vehicle applications, the TD5 is compact and comes with a Garrett turbo from factory. As a result, this means that the TD5 is highly tunable with a wide range of aftermarket support. Land Rover enthusiasts have rallied around this engine and with very good reason, so it's definitely worthy of the upper B tier. Now we'll be getting into the Volvo modular engine and its variants. Here I am grouping a few engines together as they are the same in design with only displacements and some minor updates as differences. The engines that I'm including here are the B5202, B5204, B5234, B5244, and B5252. The smallest of the Volvo inline fives, the B5202 and updated B5204, displace 2 liters and can be found naturally aspirated or turbocharged in some B5204 variants. All Volvo 5 cylinders, including those yet to come, have a full aluminum block and head with dual overhead camshafts. The B5234 and B5244 are 2.3 and 2.4 liters respectively, introduced variable valve timing, and are primarily turbocharged engines. Last here is the B5252, the 2.5 liter modular inline 5. Interestingly, this one is less powerful than the smaller iterations, topping out at 144 horsepower from inferior engine management programming. The one thing that is true for all of these engines is that they are insanely reliable. I've read through dozens of forum posts claiming 300,000 miles with minimal issues. That is a difficult feat of engineering on its own, but even harder with an unorthodox and untested engine configuration. This engine family easily belongs in the A tier. If you follow Volvo, you might have worried that I would be skipping the B5254, but no worries, it's on its own because it really is much better than the others. The B5254 was made in the time period where Ford owned Volvo, and as a result is also known as the Ford 2.5 Duratec engine. Found in a ton of Ford and Volvo vehicles, the most notable would probably be the configuration found in the Ford Focus RS500, kicking out a ridiculous 345 horsepower. The B5254 is technically a Volvo engine at heart, with the 2.5 Duratec more so a mild adaptation of it, but mechanically nearly identical. The the pistons and connecting rods in the Duratec engines were stronger, enabling reliability with a higher torque production. As a whole, the B5254 has become one of the faces of the 5-cylinder engine and undoubtedly belongs in the S tier. Transitioning to Ford, the only other 5-cylinder they ever made was the 3.2 Duratorque diesel, also known as a Power Stroke engine. This engine was found in trucks and vans, and even a Mazda truck known as the BT50. I found mixed opinions on how these 5 cylinders hold up, with one serious issue to be found. The factory oil pump struggles to hold sufficient pressure and is highly prone to failure. Now, as we know, an oil pump failure and no oil pressure is very likely to wreck an engine and shoot a rod out of the side of the block. With an issue this serious, I would say around the C tier would be appropriate. 
And circling back to finish Volvo, the last Volvo five cylinder, the D5244 is also commonly referred to as the D5. This engine is a turbo diesel and kicks out a respectable amount of torque. It has a narrow band of applications, but it matches them quite well. The fueling system is direct injection, and the compression ratio is lower than most diesels. There isn't a ton of information on these engines as very few were made, but all things considered, the D5244 is going into the B tier. Getting into the Fiat 5 cylinders, the 2.0 liter 20 valve is a member of the Pertola Serra modular engine family. Thus, it shares plenty of architecture with its four cylinder counterparts. Unlike the previously discussed engines, the 2.0 20 valve has a cast iron block, making it heavier but more robust. It saw plentiful usage in Lancia cars and packs quite a punch in its turbocharged format. These things seem quite rare, but the owners I've found say it's able to run indefinitely without much issue. Overall, the Fiat 2.0 20 valve inline 5 is a really intriguing engine, with some unique applications as well, something that I would say deserves around the A tier. The other Fiat 5 cylinder is known as the 2.4 JTD as well as the Multijet inline 5. This engine is a direct injection diesel, also using a cast iron block. Interestingly, Alfa Romeo used this power plant in various sports cars. They produce relatively average power for their displacement and have a known issue with the exhaust gas recirculation valve clogging that can lead to a rough idle. As a whole, I would place the 2.4 JTD in the lower B tier. Moving into Mercedes, their OM617 diesel inline 5 was the earliest production 5 cylinder engine created. It was inspired by the inline 4 known as the OM616 and is a full cast iron construction. It has been said that the OM617 is a top contender for being able to withstand a tank running it over or pretty much anything that you can think about, with many of them clocking hundreds of thousands of miles without a single issue in sight. There was also a turbocharged variant with new pistons, stronger connecting rods, and a better crankshaft, allowing the reliability of the OM617 to be maintained despite having more power. It's amazing that Mercedes built such an engine back in the 70s and did so while exploring the new territory of a 5 cylinder engine. The OM617 belongs in the S tier. The predecessor to the OM617, the OM602 was smaller with new aluminum heads. It should come as no surprise that the OM602 is also well known for its indestructible nature. However, the power production on this engine is rather abysmal, with even the turbocharged versions barely cracking 100 horsepower. This performance difference is worth noting, but with how much is still going for these engines, they should be placed in the A tier. The next engine in the lineup is the OM605, found in both naturally aspirated and turbocharged formats. This iteration received a double timing chain setup and an intercooler for the turbocharger, something absent from previous designs. It seems like the OM605 doesn't have quite the same reputation as its predecessors for reliability, commonly viewed as somewhat middle of the road. Although still a sound engine, there isn't anything really remarkable going on which warrants around the B tier. Fourth in the Mercedes lineup was the OM612, another direct injected turbo diesel that puts out remarkable torque figures. It is however one of the more problematic engines with various issues to be seen within the fueling system, some oil leaks, and the EGR valve which seems to be a common theme on these 5 cylinder turbo diesel engines. Although the foundation is still quite good, when compared to what else is on this list, I have to put the OM612 in the C tier. The final Mercedes 5 cylinder is the OM647. Used in a few Mercedes Sprinter vans, this engine is yet another turbo diesel. Generating a low power output, the OM647 had a very short production run. This is likely a factor of performance being inadequate for the large vans it was housed in, along with the fuel pump and injectors experiencing severe issues. There isn't anything super wrong with this engine, but it is probably the worst that we've looked at, so it will go into the D tier. Now on to VM Motori, the HR588 is far different from the other engines that we've reviewed. For the valve train, a pushrod setup is used with indirect fuel injection. Additionally, this engine is an adaptation of the four-cylinder HR488 and has a large turbo. Only two major applications exist, both an Alfa Romeo and a Toyota Land Cruiser, an interesting variety. 
For the Land Cruiser, prospective buyers seem to avoid these engines like the plague, with many owners immediately swapping it. This is a product of both low performance and scarce availability for parts, with them being both hard to find and expensive. I think the D-tier would be appropriate. The VM531 is largely similar in design to the HR588, but it is technically based off of the 425 pushrod engine. It runs a significantly larger 3.1 liter displacement, accounting for the boost in power and torque for its sole application in the Jeep Grand Cherokee. This engine was still considered undesirable, but is undoubtedly a bump from the HR588. The 531 was only used for three production years and Jeep was quick to search for another solution. It would be reasonable to place the 531 into the C tier. The largest contributor to five-cylinder technology is the Volkswagen Group by a long shot. This is the final section of the video and will contain all engines used in both Volkswagen and Audi applications. We'll start with the gas-powered engines, then get to their diesel offerings. First in their lineup was the 1.9 liter 10 valve inline 5 engine, and this engine was composed of a cast iron block with aluminum heads. Seeing as this engine debuted in the early 1980s, it utilized a carburetor for fueling and fed air through a single cam valve train. In terms of performance, these engines were pretty lackluster and were not most buyers' first choice. I think around the C tier is about right. Following this, the next iteration was the 2 liter 5 cylinder available with two valve train options. One had two valves per cylinder and the other four, thus the names 10 valve and 20 valve. The 10 valve version is the exact same engine as the 1.9 liter but with a slightly larger bore which creates the larger displacement. The 20 valve is the same engine but with better airflow and these variants gained about 30 to 40 horsepower from this change alone. The 20 valve setup was a step in the right direction, but as this is nearly the same engine as the 1.9, it will also fall into the upper C tier. The 2.1 liter 10 valve engine is quite different, with a longer stroke, different internals, and an indirect fuel injection system. These engines are also known as the EA828 and have a great reputation, mainly from its usage in the Audi 100. Interestingly, this was actually the first 5-cylinder engine from Volkswagen, and furthermore, the first ever 5-cylinder that was gasoline-powered, with the OM617 being the first ever in general. For being created in the 1970s, these engines have stood the test of time, with a fair amount still running. This was the engine that started it all for Volkswagen, and it did so with a sound fundamental design. I think the upper A tier is perfectly fair. Next up is the 2.2 liter 10 valve engine. There are two variants here, one naturally aspirated and the other fitted with a powerful turbocharger. The turbo engines also received an external oil cooler to combat the heat transfer generated through forced induction. In general, the 2.2 liter 10 valve is very similar in design to the 2.1 liter. As a result, putting it into the A tier as well makes the most sense. Of all 5-cylinder engines, the 2.2-liter 20-valve turbo engine might be one of the best ever made. Found in the late 1980s legendary Audi Quattro, these engines put out ridiculous performance figures. As a result, they found large success in racing applications and made an absolutely glorious sound. Much of the other design aspects were similar to the 2.2 10-valve engine, valve train aside. For the achievements this engine has, along with its place in automotive history, it will be going into the S tier. Next is the infamous Volkswagen VR5 engine, also commonly seen as the V5 engine. This is the only engine on today's list that is not an inline 5 cylinder. The VR5 has all 5 pistons normal to the same face of the engine block that mounts to the cylinder heads. Although a unique design and a lovely idea to deviate from the known path, it's been said that the VR5 is kind of a rough engine and doesn't accelerate smoothly. As a whole, they aren't super stable and they're hard to find parts for. On the other hand, it is an extremely cool thing to own and produces pretty respectable performance. The 2.3 VR5 will be going into the B tier. The 2.5 liter 10 valve inline 5 is one of the rarest here, only used in two vehicles. It has a much longer stroke than any of the other engines as an attempt to increase torque production. Much of the fundamental design is stagnant with the cast iron block, aluminum heads, and single camshaft all retained. However, due to poor engine management and tuning, this engine managed to produce the least power of any of them despite having the largest displacement. In addition, the torque production is also subpar, so the lack of power can't necessarily be attributed to torque prioritization. 
Despite the good design foundation, when compared to the other options from Volkswagen, it only makes sense to put the 2.5 liter 10 valve in the C tier. This next engine is a good example of why the previous one belonged a little bit lower on the list. By core design, the 2.5 liter 20 valve is very similar simply with double the valves. It also received a timing chain rather than a belt and dual overhead cams. It still is naturally aspirated but upgraded to a Bosch control unit. With the increased 20 valve airflow, dual cams, and a better control system, this engine is smooth and delivers adequate performance, seeing almost a decade of usage from its abilities. These engines are great if you want something unique and well built with a little bit of a touch of excitement. I would place it at the very top of the B tier. Now onto the last gas powered and most recent of the Volkswagen 5 cylinders, the 2.5 TFSI 5 cylinder is my favorite engine on this entire list. It represents the pinnacle of 5 cylinder technology. Still produced today, the 2.5 liter TFSI engine is known best in the RS3 and TTRS. From a technical standpoint, this engine is incredibly advanced, with graphite particulate in the engine block, variable valve timing and variable valve lift, as well as fuel stratified injection. Additionally, these engines are littered with knock sensors and a large turbo paired with a front mount intercooler. It's been a common theme that 5 cylinders really come to life when turbocharged, and that really does hold true here. This monstrous engine puts out 400 horsepower in its peak format, and is in many ways the last 5 cylinder standing. The 2.5 TFSI will no doubt go into the S tier. Onto the diesels, the smallest of them was the 2 liter turbo diesel, which was actually very similar to its gasoline powered counterparts in design. The primary differences would be the compression ratio being a diesel engine and fueling being different through mechanical distribution. The performance figures are abysmal out of this engine even for the 1980s, so I think it's fair to say that the C tier is about where this engine belongs. Next was the 2.4 liter naturally aspirated diesel engine. Along with the other two diesels, this engine has a simple single overhead cam for a valve train. Without the benefit of a turbo, this engine suffers a lot, making below 80 horsepower and only marginally more torque. They do not have any major reliability issues, but are simply just worse than everything else we've covered. Thus, they will be placed into the D tier. The final 5 cylinder diesel was once again turbocharged, as well as enlarged, to 2.5 liters of displacement. Direct injection was used for fueling a more efficient system. Between this and the high quality K14 turbo, the 2.5 TDI makes much more respectable torque figures, especially for the 1990s. Volvo used these engines in various applications as well, making for an interesting crossover between two manufacturers that kind of led the 5 cylinder engine's technology. The 2.5 TDI will wrap us up in the B tier. So there you have it. That's how I would place each of the production 5 cylinder engines. I personally love the idea of an unorthodox design and believe that owning any of these would be really cool. Be sure to comment and let me know which of these you would place differently or if I missed anything. And be sure to subscribe to the channel for the rest of the series. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.